tree again, just like yesterday. Today I'm gonna close the door first, but all right, come on. Oh, good boy, good boy. Morning. Every good day starts with walking the weasel. Walking the weasel every day. Look how green this grass looks in the sunlight. Remember it yesterday? We were lying in the grass over there. It's so soft. It's fake. Well, it's real. Like they, it, it's real, but they grew it somewhere else and then brought it here. They cheated. Diesel, you got any more in the tank? Our customers are going to meet us here right away. Actually, they're coming in uh, their own box truck, and then they're going to move the boxes and the freight from this box into their box. A whole bunch of boxes is flying around this morning. So, you get what I meant there? They're coming here, they're gonna take the freight off my trailer and put it into their little straight truck. So, it's like one of them undercover deals. Yeah, this is what they wanted, so. Customer wants, customer gets. Hey, Diesel. Hey, Diesel. Look this grass, so soft and green, man. This is really cool. I love grass. Can we take it home? Diesel does love grass a lot. He's obsessed with it. That's partly because uh, he's Canadian. And as Canadians, I always say, you know, when we see grass, we're so excited that we eat it. <laughs> we don't get to see it for very long. Are we done, Diesel? I'll sniff around here for a little bit longer. I'm serious, though. I'm serious. Look at this grass. This grass is so soft. Feel that? This is the nicest grass I have ever felt in my entire life. Wow, whoever grew this grass, wherever they grew it, good job. High five. I want some of your grass. Yeah, it's not the bad kind of grass. Drugs are bad. I want some of that grass. Look at that diesel. Cheap thrills, man. Get excited by nice grass. There's something wrong with us. We're on the road to Calgary, or Calgary, as some people pronounce it. I don't know what's right. Cal I say Calgary. Calgary, Calgary. Both the same thing. I will remind you, it is my favorite Canadian city. I don't know why. My sister used to live in Calgary. Sister Cheryl, you met her. She's the one uh, we built the shed for. She lived in Calgary for a while. My parents actually lived in Calgary. Cheryl was actually born in Calgary. Well, my parents used to live in Calgary for a bit. So we got some ties to the city. It's a very clean city, a very nice city. It's a very fast growing city. It's a good city. I like that city. Plus they're home to the Calgary Flames. You know what's interesting though? Calgary bought Atlanta's team, the Atlanta Flames. They became the Calgary Flames. Then Atlanta got a new team, the Atlanta Thrashers. And then Winnipeg, my city, bought them again. <laughs> now they're the Winnipeg Jets. Atlanta, you just can't hold on to your NHL teams. What's going on down there? It's not a hockey town, eh? Speaking of which, hockey season is going to start in a little while. Should really try to follow it closer this year. I always cheer for the Jets, but I never know where they are in the standings. I'm a devoted fan, but I don't really follow them. <laughs> I didn't even know if they were in the playoffs or not. Oh boy, I gotta do better this year. So this is uh, b b b the highway that we're on right now. How about that? I think it's Highway 2. Yeah, Highway 2, north towards Calgary. I told you how much I like Calgary. I like Calgary. Are you from Calgary? Tell me if you're from Calgary in the comment section. Just go, yay Calgary or something. I like Calgary. All right, well, we're just coming into Calgary here. Man, this city's growing so fast. They got nice freeways too, overpasses, underpasses. It's just a beautiful thing. Edmonton's got the same thing. Edmonton's got a lot of new highways and freeways being built right now. A lot of new overpasses going on up there. That's the other city in Alberta. 
they got two, two big cities. We're on Deerfoot Trail here. They don't call their roads roads, they call them trails. Kind of old school that way, I guess. And we're just getting into where everything gets a little crazy. Should be a little interesting. So this is the highway they speak of, Alberta Highway 2. This is the quote unquote freeway between Calgary and Edmonton. They call it a freeway and it's marked as a freeway in the Atlas, but it's not a freeway because they have access roads coming onto it all the time. And it's not like off ramps, it's like you gotta stop and turn. That's not a freeway to me, I, I don't know. What do I know? But you can't really complain because Alberta does maintain their highways very well. For the most part, they're rich. They got lots of oil. Lots and lots of oil. And a lot of people. So if you want to find the money out west, you go to Alberta. Humpties. The restaurant. So we decided to stop at Humpties for dinner. Or for lunch. Right, Diesel? Maybe I'll save you some. Maybe I won't. You got your leash on right now, though, so we're gonna give you a walk. Walk the weasel because he needs to relieve pressure. And we're just on Highway 2, right? Is it Highway 2? Between uh, Edmonton and Calgary. Headed towards Edmonton. So we gotta go to Edmonton and then Lloydminster. Lloydminster is right by Saskatchewan. So we're about five hours away from there yet, but I'm starving and I decided to treat myself to a meal today at a restaurant. Why not, right? Why not? Right, Diesel? You think I deserve a meal from a restaurant today? Oh, maybe. Man, if you let me out, maybe. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're gonna go walk him and then uh, go grab a bite to eat. Well, I feel like talking again. So, you guys are gonna have to listen. You know, some people ask, like, how do you vlog? How do you make a good vlog? I have no idea. I turn the camera on or I, I start talking. That's all I do. That's what you gotta do. You just, just give her. I don't know what I'm gonna say right now. Everything is always, mostly everything is always off the top of my head. Just whatever comes from my brain goes through the little filter, goes through my mouth, whatever slips through that shouldn't, gets cut out later. I just sort of share my thoughts on everything, you know? A lot of what I say doesn't actually make the final cut. I'm not saying that I say bad stuff, I'm just saying that I got a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of nothing to talk about, sort of like right now. But we're on our way to uh, Wainwright, Alberta now, actually. The guy in Lloydminster, who I'm delivering to, agreed to meet me in Wainwright. It was actually his idea. And that's a little closer for me. So we're both saving. So we're like, hey, that'll work. I'm gonna drop a couple boxes off of him. Something like 60 something boxes or 50 boxes, I don't know. So we'll get that done tomorrow morning. Then I got a whopping four boxes to deliver to one spot in uh, Sherwood Park in Edmonton. And then I have another 111 boxes that have to go to a customer in Edmonton, but they won't receive it until tomorrow night. So I can pick up my trailer Friday morning, so I'm gonna have a little bit of time off. Uh, just gonna reset my brain, I guess. I'll probably rent a movie. Maybe I'll go see a movie, I don't know. I don't really wanna spend money. Let's wave. That's pretty cool. I remember going along with my dad when I was some, when I was small. He's probably just having the time of his life in there. I remember when I was a kid. Oh, my dad was the toughest man alive. He drove the big rigs. Yeah, he's still the toughest guy alive. I think he can fix anything. Tell you what, you break it, dad will fix it. Definitely. 
I break a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't break as much stuff as I used to, and I'm learning to fix things myself now. But, uh, yeah, Dad's always the fix-it man. He used to build houses. I think I've said that before. He was a carpenter for many years before he started trucking, before I was born. He did a little bit of carpentry for a little while there, a few years ago, but trucking sucked him back in. So he's still in trucking. It's hard to get out of trucking, man. Once you get into trucking, you're a trucker for life. You will die a trucker. Doesn't matter if you're sitting in an office. If you've been a trucker at one point, you're still a trucker. You can tell yourself whatever you want, you're still a trucker. So you went and got your aircraft license, your commercial license, and you fly planes now. Oh, guess what? Now you're a trucker pilot, still a trucker. So the road to Wainwright is a narrower road. I wouldn't consider it a narrow road, it's still got wide shoulders and whatnot, but it's a two lane. And we'll be on this most of the rest of the day, actually the whole rest of the day. But another two hours down this road. Uh, we're actually making a couple of turns. We're turning on to the 21 right away in about two and a half kilometers. probably get there around what 7 o'clock 7 30 tonight and then we don't unload until what 8 8 30 9 o'clock tomorrow morning this load is moving a little slower than I'd like it to I'd like to be getting a few more miles but you know not every trip works out perfect with these multi drops that's why some people don't like them because sometimes you don't get the miles sometimes it's a lot of waiting seven kilometers turn right on 21 I don't mind the waiting now and then. I wouldn't want to do all this waiting every time, but every now and then I don't mind this. It's a little bit more relaxed that way. Not too big of a rush all the time. You get some time to relax in the evenings. Maybe rent a movie or buy a movie. Who rents movies nowadays? Everyone watches Netflix. So this is Bashaw. Bashaw, Alberta. Hello. Here's your town. Any of you from Bashaw? Any of you from nearby? Oh, I hope this train track isn't too rough. Ah! You never know in Canada, you never know. Some of the railway tracks are just brutal. Brutal! Turn right on 21. Really damage your truck on some of them. When going to visit your neighbors requires packing a lunch for the journey. That's country. You can see your neighbors, it's not country. Not fully country. I can actually see my neighbors at my new house, so it's not totally country. But it's small town country, right? I don't know, there's different levels of country in my mind. There's like country outside the city where there's like sort of suburbs. I call them suburbs, but you know, it's not quite suburbs. You know, you got bigger yards. Maybe some trees, a little quieter roads, no buses or public transit. Okay, your country, whatever. Extra country would be sort of like where my new place is gonna be. A little town no one's ever heard of, way out in the middle of nowhere. It's not even really a town, it's just sort of a, a cluster of people. A couple of families that decided, hey, let's all build a house around the same general area. Big, big yards. And then there's like extreme, super duper, complete country out here. Where, like I said, going to visit your neighbor requires packing a lunch or gassing up the car. That's country. When you can see your dog running away for two days, I guess that'd be prairie country. But to me, prairie is country. I don't know. Open skies. Whatever. I'll stop talking about it. I think you get my point. Oh, we're 100 kilometers, 98 to be exact, from where we're gonna sleep tonight. I've stayed in this town of Wainwright before. Actually, on my birthday two years ago, I stayed in Wainwright. I remember that. I was driving the W900 then. Was it two years ago or three years ago already? Might have been three. I think 
was three, three years ago. Wow, time flies. Need to look, there's horses over there. Look at that. Oh, that just made his day. That just made his day. That is a military vehicle. Military, it's got government plates too. That is probably because we are in Wainwright, Alberta. I forgot, it's a military town. They got uh, military people around here. I think there's a training base nearby. So this whole town is made up of a lot of military families. So big shout out to you military families of our Canadian military up here. Thank you for what you do. We all do our part and your part is very important because without you guys, I wouldn't have the freedom to be posting this video on the internet right now. Who knows what would happen if you wouldn't fight for our freedom. So, Diesel. What do you have to say to the good men and women who serve our country? You know, silence is actually very respectable. A moment of silence for the fallen people. I understand what you're getting at here, Diesel. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> we should always remember why we have the freedom to just go anywhere we want on the internet. You know there's many countries out there that have restrictions on social media? Many countries don't even allow you to have a Facebook or Twitter. They don't, even, they don't let YouTube into the country. You can't watch it in their country because it's not free. So there's a lot of people who have died to make this part of the world the paradise that it is in Canada and the United States. I like that our two countries have the same idea on freedom. Slightly varying political differences, obviously. Like there's, there are differences between our countries. We don't agree on everything. We're actually very, very in disagreement with a few issues, but none of them are really that important when you think of it. All the important issues we agree on and we stand shoulder to shoulder to protect what we believe in out here. North America is a paradise. It is the promised land. It's, it's an oasis. And there are many other places like that in the world. I'm not saying this is the only one. I like Australia too. Australia is actually a great paradise as well because it's an island. But it's also a continent. Like, the whole island is theirs. That's pretty cool too. So. And other places in the world as well. But I, just seeing the military vehicle there made me think about it and made me feel a little patriotic for a second. And Yeah. Thank goodness I got freedom to post my life on the internet so you can watch it. So, Diesel, what do you want to do tonight? The sun's still up. You want to watch a movie? What, you want to go to bed early? Well, that's lame. You want to go outside? Come here. Come on. Come here. You ready to go outside, man? Oh, yeah. I had to wake you up from your little nap there. He was sort of half asleep. <laughs> I think what it is, is there's something in the lens that our human eyes can't see when it's recording, but he can see, so it trips him out every time the camera's recording and pointed at him. Because you have to believe me, he's honestly a very, very energetic dog. It's hard to control him sometimes. Just whenever the camera's on him, he's just a statue. I try to catch him when he's being himself, but as soon as he notices the camera's there, he's all serious. Just in case, you never know if Lucy's watching. He doesn't want to look like a crazy dog. <laughs> okay, guys, so thanks for uh, joining me today. We didn't do much today. Uh, tomorrow might be a little more interesting, but tomorrow we won't be doing very much driving either because we're just pretty much going to Edmonton, I think. And they don't want to unload us until, like, middle of the night tomorrow night, so that's weird. Oh, well. So you know what to do, guys. There's a description box down below if you haven't already, or if you're new, go down below to the description. There's links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a whole pile of other stuff. I'll see you tomorrow at 4 a.m. because there's a new video for me every single day, 4 a.m. Central Time here in North America.